Good morning. God's blessings to you in the name of Christ our Savior. Today we are observing Pentecost Day, the day of Pentecost, Pentecost Sunday. Uh, what a joy it is to once again be with you in your homes as we uh, worship in these kind of means. Sad that we're still having to, uh, but let's take precautions and care for people and all of that. Um, as you saw in a letter, the elders are looking at having indoor worship service here in church. Uh, there's going to be a survey coming out very soon. Maybe you will have already received it at the time that you watch this uh, in regard to having uh, worship in church. Uh, please look to that and please reply. Uh, it'd be very helpful to have everybody's response to that. Uh, so thank you very much. For our worship this day, we begin with O Holy Spirit, enter in. Uh, you see the links there and you have that before you. And we sing our praises. <laughs>
now continue with our invocation, invocation, confession, and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For the intro and the collect, you will need the insert that was sent to you by Chris. We turn to the intro it. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This being the day of Pentecost, we will include our reading today from Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together <coughs> in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who were speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in his own native tongue, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. 
And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is found in John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39, and it does serve as the basis for our message this day, as well as the uh, children's sermon that will follow this reading. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We'll now get ready for the children's message. Well, oh, good morning, children. Good to, uh, well, I can't, I can't say it's happy to see you, but I hope you're there and watching and ready for this children's message. It, it's going to kind of tell us a little bit about the gospel lesson today. So I have here just a, a, a bowl, and I took a little pop bottle, and I've got some holes punched into it. Now, I want you to think about and watch as I take and pour one thing into here, it's going to separate and go into different directions. So as I pour this here, you see that with the holes in the bottom, it's going in five different directions because I've got those different holes that are poked in there going those different directions. So it comes in one spot and it goes out five different ways five different areas. It goes in one place and it gets spread out and goes to other places. Well, this is a way to illustrate perhaps what Jesus said in our text today. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. It's very simple. God pours his love into us. He loves us. He cares for us. With his word, he has saved us. And as we believe in him, well, then we want to do good for other people. So we tell other people about the good news. Think about your own body. As God's word comes into your ears, you're going to show his love in all different kinds of ways. The Bible talks about having feet that will run and go to spread the good news of Jesus. We have hands that can help do chores, help our parents out, help a friend out. We have a mouth by which we can speak the good news to other people and tell people about Jesus and his love for us. We can use our eyes to see what does need to be done, who needs help, who can I care for. So as God's love comes into us, as Jesus is the living waters and as he comes into us, so he invites us to share that love with other, others. And as we have the joy of salvation in Jesus, so we have a heart that's filled with love toward other people. Jesus said, 
Out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So believe in Jesus, continue to hear him, read those Bible stories, talk about Jesus, and let his love flow out from your hearts. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for pouring your love into my heart and help me to show that love to others. Not to keep it for myself, but to spread it out to other people. Dear God, thank you for Jesus and for the love you have given to me first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll get ready to sing our next hymn. And our hymn is Holy Spirit, Light Divine. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and from God our Father. You know, there is something that's very special about water. And it is a necessity of life for the body, first and foremost. Our bodies are made out of 70% of water. Water is involved in our salvation as well, too, from sin. It, uh, with the word of God, water in holy baptism washes away sins. And water also has an effect on our emotional well-being. And I'd like to consider that aspect of water for a moment. Think of ways that you find that water helps you emotionally. So consider, we like to build our homes by bodies of water. Usually, those kind of homes are very highly sought after, and they're also a little more expensive. We like to take vacations that have to do something with water, cruise, fishing, boating, camping by a mountain stream, swimming, wading. Being in or by water is very refreshing for the soul and for the mood. A trip to the spa includes a sauna, a jacuzzi, a waterfall, or a pool, I'm guessing. We like to sit on the beach and just Listen to the waves roll in. It's very calming. Studies show that people even like landscape pictures that include water of some sort. When shown uh, pictures of just uh, land or uh, something with water, people really liked the water pictures more. Having that aspect uh, is very psychologically pleasing. Having 
pools or uh, waterfalls or uh, streams or waves crashing in. Something with water. It's just very pleasant to look at. Lots of people like the refreshment that water brings right to our own homes. We have swimming pools or hot tubs that we can relax in. Some people like those uh, little tabletop waterfalls that create the sound of, of falling water. And it is something that people use to find moments of relaxation. You know, we can even mimic the sound of water falling in some sort with sound machines, or we even have white noise apps that can give us those sounds. There is no doubt that water is so very much associated with our healing, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Water is a source of life. Consider the hunt of certain enthusiasts to find water on Mars. And if they can find evidence of water on Mars, the assumption is, well, maybe it can sustain life. God certainly knows about all of the healing and cleansing waters on earth. He's the one, after all, that invented it and created it. He made us to be reliant upon it, and he blessed our associations with water. God uses water for healing and for giving and sustaining life. So it's no stretch at all when Jesus says in our text from John 7 today, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Well, Jesus is God who created all things. He certainly knows about the wonderful aspects of water and the life-giving that aspects that it has. So on this day of Pentecost, we give thanks to God for the Holy Spirit. The Spirit, the third person of the Holy Trinity, has work that he does for you and for me. The Spirit works to reveal the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ the Son. The Holy Spirit uses the word of God to convict sinful man of sin and then bring sinful man to himself. The Spirit works through holy baptism to give us faith. And as we live in our baptism each and every day, the Holy Spirit sustains our faith once again in Jesus and what he did for us. The Spirit helps us to see and to believe in Jesus alone as the Redeemer of all mankind. Believing in Christ, we then have what Christ gives, life and salvation and the promises of full healing in heaven and walking in harmony with God all of our days. This is what Jesus means when he talks about drinking from him. When it comes to that which is good and truly filling, it's only Jesus. When it comes to truly living, only Jesus. When it comes to truly being whole, only Jesus. Christ Jesus pours out his love into us. He pours himself through his word into us. He does this with his words and with his promises in Holy Scripture. We have that good news that our sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven through Christ Jesus, through what he did in his dying and rising again. You are brought into harmony with God through Christ. Your relationship with God has been restored. And the whole earth will find its restoration to pristine condition when God returns on the last day. 
That's one of the things that God is also working towards, the restoration of all creation. But that will happen on the last day when Christ returns again in glory, and it will be then that God renews and heals all things. That's his promise, and that's what we can continue to keep looking forward to. So today, we live with peace and joy and hope in Christ and what he's going to do. And we know this according to his word. We believe his promises. And then we sing his praise. All that God does for you and for me and all that he gives us fills us with the living water of Christ so that we might know him, believe in him, and have eternal life in him. Because God's love is so filling as he abides with us and in us by his grace, it cannot help but spill out as we engage others around us. Christ's love gets projected from us out into the world around us. We become a blessing to our family and to our neighbors and to those that we work with. As we give in response to our salvation in tithes and offerings, we are able to spread Christ's light into other nations as we support our missionaries. As we learn to know what is good and right, we encourage what is good and right in our communities, in our state, in our nation. We pray for all people in their needs. And we are ready to lend a helping hand to those that need the love that we can give to them. We are willing to sacrifice our time and our resources so that other people might be cared for. That is part of the living water that flows from our hearts as we have had our hearts filled with Christ. So as we serve in the love of Christ to those around us, this is what Jesus is saying here. Out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So the good stuff of joy in our salvation and peace with God that God pours into us through his word and his spirit flows out from our hearts and brings these good things to others. Our salvation in Christ is seen in our joy and our hope and then other people get to see that in us. As we have received this blessing from God, we then become blessings to other people. You and I become the face of God to other people. Therefore, we live as God is to us. We live then mercifully and graciously before people. As the Lord is abounding in steadfast love toward us, so we live in that same way toward others. This is what the work of the Spirit is all about on this day in which we recognize the day of the Holy Spirit, this day of Pentecost. He is still working in and through us in his word to reveal Christ and to glorify Christ. The only real refreshment that we need is Christ, and that's who the Holy Spirit continues to bring us to. We are whole only when we are in Christ that we believe in him and we call upon his name, that we are forgiven and loved, that we are blessed to be a blessing. That is the living water that flows out of our hearts to others. God grants you faith to receive first God and his gifts to you and then to serve in his name to other people. Christ Jesus is our living water who brings us cleansing and healing and wholeness. And we have those only in him. Amen. Now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now make confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers. Almighty God, you have blessed us in love with the Savior to whom the nations cry and in whom is forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Grant to us your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, whom you have promised, that we and all who call upon his name shall be saved. Help us to treasure in our hearts your mercy and give ourselves fully in mercy to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised the thirsty will drink from the em will drink, and from the empty will flow forth rivers of living water. Help us to show forth in holy lives the fruits of the Spirit, and to live with love toward our neighbor. Give us a servant's heart that doesn't seek our own way, but walks on the path of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings of married life, and we rejoice with Ken and Diane Kale as they observe their 50th wedding anniversary on June 5th, this coming Friday. We thank you for the blessings that you have given to them, and we pray that you would bless them in the years to come so that they may remain faithful to you and devoted to each other. By your presence, gladden each day, that you graciously grant them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, have mercy and spare us. Put an end to the pandemic and restore the communities of the world to their common life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given our nation the gift and heritage of freedom. It came at the cost of many lives, on battlefields far and near. Receive our thanks for the sacrifice of men and women who served in the armed forces. And give us the courage to persevere and preserve the liberty in our own time and to use it honorably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you carry the burdens of our lives in your hands. Deliver from illness and suffering all who cry to you for release, hear us on behalf of the sick and the afflicted. Continue to be with Marge, who continues in hospice. Grant her your presence and grace. We pray, dear God, that you would be with all who are ill with the COVID-19 virus. We pray that you comfort them, grant them good medical care, good rest, and healing from however it is they suffer from this virus. We pray, dear God, that you are with all of those who are shut in and homebound, especially the elderly and the lonely. Grant them your presence and your peace. And there are those that we name to you, dear God, in our hearts. Hear us on their behalf. O precious Lord, answer your people and deliver them from their infirmities and their grief by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear your people for the sake of him who loved us even unto death and who lives to call himself all who will be saved. You know what we need and those things that we should ask in your name. Grant them to us for the sake of our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We now sing our closing hymn, You Are the Way Through You Alone.